Hello, everyone, and welcome to EW Dark Elevation. I am Excalibur, joined by No More BS, Paul White, the world's strongest man, Mark Henry. And we are diving right into the action. Let's throw it down to the dapper yapper, Justin Roberts. Your opening contest is set for one fall with a 20-minute time limit. Being accompanied by Luther from San Juan, Puerto Rico, weighing 185 pounds, Sir Pentico. Sir Pentico, always accompanied by Luther. Done some more research on our friend Luther. Luther, come to find out, has done some extensive work at the Jacques Cousteau Research Foundation in the discovery of dolphins and their communication. One of the largest mammal brains equivalent to humans are the dolphin. Luther has an honorary PhD from Woods Hole University, which is the most prestigious marine biology university in the world. So another interesting fact about Luther from Chaos Project. So. I don't have to call books. Are you saying that's that's why he screeches so much? He's communicating with dolphins. Could be. <laughs> and his opponent from Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, weighing 191 pounds, Lee Moriarty. Lee Moriarty with a big opportunity here to kick off AEW Dark Elevation. You see his mentor, Matt Seidel, on the crutches. Seidel suffered a knee injury recently. They'll keep him out of action, but he's still in the corner of Lee Moriarty here tonight, Mark. That just shows that grit and determination of, you know, Matt Seidel want to support Lee Moriarty, but we both know, Mark, that high flying leads to high risk. High risk equals no reward. <laughs> well, in our book, that's why we keep our feet on the ground. <laughs> keep our feet on the ground. Lee Moriarty is a ground-based wrestler. He can do a lot of things, but his he knows his strong suit, and that's keeping his feet on the ground. Hopefully. Yeah, Moriarty very, Highly technical, and Serpentico, you know, I mean, Serpentico is Luther's tag team partner and personal punching bag, but Serpentico, pound for pound, may be the toughest man in AEW. I agree 100% with you, Excalibur. You should have a contract with Timex to take a licking and keep on ticking. <laughs> well said. Collar and elbow tie up here, center of the ring, Moriarty. Uh, the height advantage, able to back Serpentico up to the ropes. A bit of size advantage on Serpentico. And there's Serpentico with more of that Luther training. Seen advantage, take it. Irish whip into the ropes. Moriarty rolls off the back of Serpentico. Nice front leg sweep, followed up by that lunging kick to the elbow. Moriarty covers. And it's hard to throw a punch if you just got your arm kicked that hard. And you notice how when Moriarty went for the pinfall attempt, he captured the wrist of Serpentico and immediately transitioned into the cross face submission. Come on here, Mike. You gotta get control of the ring. I'm a big fan of Luther too, but you can't let him get away with everything. Since when did you see a referee take control? Oh, well, that's true. That's why they're zebras. Well, Serpentico just took advantage of the distraction provided by Luther. Short elbow drop, catching Moriarty right on the bridge of the nose. Now here's where Serpentico, I think, makes mistakes. Once he gets some offense in, because it seems like the guy, the guy is always being used as a weapon or getting beat up. Once he gets a little success, it kind of goes to his head a little bit. Wow, he just popped his own neck and just act like he didn't get hit in the face. Serpentico, the double boots, backed off Moriarty now. Takes Moriarty out of the corner. Serpentico, single leg drop kick. Takes Lee off his feet, hook of the far leg. Just a two count for Serpentico. Good powerful kick out by Lee Moriarty. See how he got the feet up, got his whole core engaged on that kick out. Looking at, looking at Moriarty, he looks like he's uh, been in the gym a little bit. Like he's getting stronger looking. Well, probably he realizes the competition's pretty steep in AEW. Any asset that you can bring to the table to make yourself better, you got to work on. Yeah. I'd like to remind fans that coming up this Wednesday night, AEW will be making our debut in South Carolina, Paul, your home state, at the Colonial Life Arena in Columbia this Wednesday, March 30th. Great seats still available. And then our long-awaited debut in New Orleans, Louisiana, at the UNO Lakefront Arena on Wednesday, April 13th. Tickets for both events on sale right now, AEWTIX.com and Ticketmaster.com. Might want to get some tickets, because I'm going to lace my boots up for South Carolina. Uh oh, really? South Kakalaki, I'm going to get back in the ring. Wow, I'll tell you what, uh, you do that. Come I'm, on, man, I'm why don't you come down with me and lace up your boots, too? <laughs> no, my boots don't even have laces in them anymore. They're just in the closet. They're like paperweights. You see Matt Seidel on the outside trying to urge on Lee Moriarty. Moriarty, Back uppercut. To that arm. Yeah, uppercut to that elbow. We saw him concentrate on earlier in this match. Serpentico trying to work out the kinks. 
Yeah, Moriarty was able to get out of that rear chin lock by working that elbow. Oh, nice throw by Moriarty. Yeah, arm capture into the Saito suplex by Lee Moriarty. He's starting to come back. He's got that look on his face. Lee High oh. Mood. Oh, caught Serpentico with the heel on the side of the head. Moriarty double, double knees. knees. Yeah. Picking. Lee picking up that pace. Serpentico, though, rolling elbow strike, but just a clubbing lariat by Lee Moriarty. <laughs> Serpentico wound up and swung for the fences, and that came off like a little kiss. Mariota wasn't, wasn't registering that at all. That's funny. <laughs> Swing and a miss by Serpentico. Oh. Moriarty, oh! Nice edge chop to the side of the head. They call it a break chop. I don't know why they call it a break chop. Uh, if something's going to break, your hand or somebody's traps. Well, actually, I, I now remember the break realis is a nerve that goes from the neck. All right, doctor. <laughs> What's going on? Oh, so you can talk all this. Well, look at look at this now. Moriarty's doing. Moriarty's getting, Moriarty's getting, and he gets the yeah! submission. All right. right. Let's go, oh, Lee. Lee Moriarty. Jeez. Well, Lee Moriarty, man. I'm sorry. What were you saying about the break realis? Now, who was more it's fired too up late there? Now. Paul, who was more fired up there, Lee Moriarty or Mark Henry? Mark Henry, I got scared. I think I peed myself a little bit. Oh. Well, Tiger style, Lee Moriarty kicking off elevation here tonight. There's that break chop, just stunned Serpentico. And then the arm ringer into the cross face, center of the ring, Serpentico had left with no choice oh. but to tap out. Yeah, look how forward Moriarty had his hips kicked out on that, all that pressure on the neck and shoulder. Yeah, he pushed that arm back, too, so they've been working on it the whole match. Great victory for Lee Moriarty here tonight. Good night. ADW Rampage, Fridays at 10 on TNT. We'll be right back with the living dead woman, Abaddon. minute time limit crawling to the ring from the Black Hills Abaddon! Mark Henry covering his eyes as soon as Abaddon came through the tunnel I can't take my eyes off of her is she is she done is she done Abaddon. no she's not done big daddy she's not done Abaddon crawling her way into oh. the ring when's the last time you've seen a character that intimidating it's been a long while And her opponent, Danny B. Danny B making her AEW debut. She's gonna have her work cut out for her. And intimidation is really the, the key word, Paul. Abaddon is a, she's such a such a unique figure, but so powerful and able to withstand so much punishment. It just gives her opponents fits. It's just her mindset. Look at athleticism. Nice little drop kick there. Using the ring to her advantage. Danny B sent. Oh, Abaddon! Oh, oh man. Wow, that's concussion protocol. Wow. Rolling senton. Poor Danny B got her, hit her head pretty hard on that one. You, you know I don't like scary movies. And I this know is that. a scary movie. Listen to this crowd. Yeah, Austin, Texas, maybe Abaddon country. Absolutely. And we are sold out here. Run, Danny, run. The HEB Center in Cedar Park. Danny B now boot to the midsection. Jawbreaker Ooh. on Abaddon. She's still afraid, though, but that's the thing with Abaddon. She run. does such a great job of getting everyone's head. Oh, Danny oh, B ran into the ropes, but ran into a huge clothesline. Jeez. I mean, was that a smile? I think so. The, the only time Abaddon's happy is when Abaddon is inflicting punishment on their opponent. And, uh-oh, Danny B set up for the Black Dahlia. Abaddon planted Danny B center of the ring. And scores the win. The winner of this match. I would just Abaddon. I would just act like I was hurt. <laughs> just get it over with. Yeah, but you know what? Kudos to Abaddon. You know, to have that ring presence. We know wrestling and competing. If you can get in your opponent's head, it's a great advantage. Obviously, Abaddon does a fantastic job right here. The Black Dahlia. Look how she can torch herself on the cover. How about not 
Well, I can't take my eyes off her. I think she's amazing. Abaddon so fierce and so intense and notching another victory here tonight in AEW. Up next on AEW singles competition, Penta Oscuro. This contest is set for one fall with a 20 minute time limit. Being accompanied by Alex Abra Hantes from Mexico City, Mexico, weighing 207 pounds. Penta Oscuro. Penta Oscuro, this dark aspect of Penta's personality that was brought out by the black mist of Malachi Black. You see Alex Abrahantas, his Penta's uh, dark priest, his crypt keeper, who knows what. Dark priest, I like that. I'm going with that, I like that. He like looks like the emperor from Star Wars. His opponent, J.P.H. J.P.H. JPH rocking that good beard. I give him props Man, on the beard. Look like Bad News Brown. Yeah, he does. He's got a good beard going. Man, beard gang in effect. Uh, but this is Penta territory. Now you hear the, the chant of Cerro Miedo, zero fear. But, you know, much like Abaddon, Penta uses his his presence, his intimidation to get into his opponent's head and really undermine them. And JPH throwing a hasty kick. Penta caught it. Oh, nice switch there by JPH. But oh, ho, ho, ho. Not today, rookie. I'm going to have to love that sling blade. Sling blade into the lateral press. JPH able to kick out. It's one of my favorite moves that Penta does, that sling blade. When he gets that thing going, he just sling blade for you, sling blade for everybody. And he builds up so much speed, so much momentum, and a huge overhand chop into the chest of JPH. That's a good chop. I'm yeah. kind of a chop authority. That's a pretty good one. That was pretty good. I, I, I don't think that Penta likes beards, because he just kicked him in his face like he wanted to take it off. <laughs> Trying to knock the just for men out. Oh, oh, that have was a, mercy. a thudding chop. And Paul, as you as you know, sometimes the chops that, that thud actually hurt about 10 times worse than the ones that really snap. Well, the whole purpose of doing the chops is to interrupt somebody's breathing. Because you get somebody out of rhythm, they're not breathing. If it's hard to breathe, it's hard for them to fight. Yeah. Look at that sidekick, the flexibility of Penta. Uh-oh, Penta. Oh, the under the hook, oh. yep, made in Japan. He plants JPH and Penta. Maybe looking to snap the arm of his opponent. Oh, right in the short rib. Ooh, and you see no short ribs? Alex saying, oh, no oh mercy. mercy. JPH just had his arm ripped out of socket, and Penta scores the win. The winner of this match, Penta Oscuro. Call the paramedics. I think he broke his arm. And here's the thing, Penta was mean before. But now that he's had that black mist flown into his eyes, he has absolutely no mercy, no heart left within him. Emperor no. Abahente is, is also standing there just gloating over the fact that Pimple just almost ripped his arm out of socket. You know what say? Events in life have formulate who we are. I think that black mist has formulated Penta. He's hyper-focused right now. And Penta, there's your winner. And if I'm House of Black, I'm worried. Terrified. Coming up next, the Associate Stooge, Brandon Cutler, goes one on one with Frankie Kazarian. This next 
match battle set for one fall with a 20 minute time limit. Approaching the ring from Rancho Cucamonga, California, weighing 203 pounds, Brandon Cutler. Is Rancho Cucamonga really a place? <laughs> yes, uh, just south of Walla Walla, Washington. <laughs> just south. What a silly I name. Mean, it's down the road a piece, but it's still south. Why would you call anything Cucamonga? Ridiculous. I believe it's named after one of the indigenous tribes in Southern California region, but that's neither here nor there. I didn't want to say that. And his opponent <laughs> from Iaco Valley, California, weighing 216 pounds. You guessed it, Frank A. Kazarian. Frankie Kazarian, one of the toughest men Ow! in the AEW locker room. Mark Henry, just after those eyebrows grew back, I'm sorry, buddy. This is an interesting thing. Both these guys from California, completely different styles. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, Frankie Kazarian, very much a hard-hitting throwback sort of style. I mean, Kazarian trained by the late great killer Kowalski. And Brandon Cutler, he came up, uh, he came up alongside the Young Bucks. You know, they were, uh, they were school-age friends. They were, you know, they wrestled all in the same places. They traveled all up the roads together. And, you know, the Young Bucks are one of the greatest tag teams of all time. And Brandon Cutler is an associate stooge, not even a full-fledged stooge. Where's the associates? I don't think dressed. they want to claim him. <laughs> oh, my God. Oh, Frankie. That's, that's part of that old school with Frankie Kazarian, just that grit. He's got a lot of grit. Very physical striker, Frankie Kazarian. And you have to remember that uh oh, Kazarian opening up the, the jacket of Cutler and lands in that shot. Oh, ho, ho, ho. he really Lord. needs to take that outfit and burn it. That's what he needs to do. The shoes, too. The underwear, the socks. Just everything. throw the whole guy in the fire. Yeah. Well, the thing you have to remember about Kazarian is that he and Christopher Daniels as SCU, one of the great tag teams of their generation and once great friends of the Young Bucks. And the Young Bucks actually ended the team of SCU, of Kazarian and Daniels, with underhanded means. And that also ended the friendship between Daniels, Kazarian, and the Young Bucks. Well, kicking that is not going to help. Look at it. He hurt his foot. Well, I'll dummy. tell you one thing. In a drawer full of knives, Brandon Cutler's a spoon. Cutler thinking better of uh, return to the ring. Well, my Lord, Hammers. Oh, gracious. And Kazarian taking is advantage. He, is he ever going to be able to stand up right in the ring? Well, I guess it's not what you know, it's who you know. And Brandon Cutler crawling his way. Over to the corner, maybe looking for the cold spray to soothe some of his aches and pains. Spray it on itself. But Kazarian right behind, big right hand. Uh oh. Frankie gosh. with the interception there. What do you think is about to happen? Uh, maybe Rick Knox thought it was hairspray. Oh, yeah, oh. Rick Knox. Pay attention oh, to that. Oh, no! From behind. Not like this. Well, gotta protect yourself at all times. Not like this. Cutler. Sending Kazarian shoulder first into those steel ring steps. Brandon, I think they know him. Brandon Cutler getting his footing up on the top rope. Oh, maybe they could think a little bit better of it. <laughs> oh oh, oh what my a, goodness. What an ass. Brandon Cutler. Comes off the bottom rope. He shocks the world very nearly. I don't think anybody shocks the shot. world. Oh, wait, uh, Frankie Kazarian. Oh! Guillotine leg drop from Kazarian. Off the second rope. Yeah, Frankie Kazarian. What a waste of a good move. He could have just punched him in the face. Well, he would have, he may have hit, actually punched him in the, that face guard, that shield. Oh, little chin check action. Frankie Kazarian one step ahead of Mark Henry here. Cutler. Oh my goodness. He's, he's not me? looking down at his opponent. He's looking out to the crowd here. Oh my goodness. I don't even know what to say to all that. Oh, Cut, Cutler with the leg. There, there's dumb and then there's just damn it. He's just, stupid. Then it's just 
Stupid. Stupid. I mean, there's right. a reason why the Young Bucks only have one stooge, and he's not even a full-fledged stooge. Not even a full-fledged stooge. I mean, I wouldn't trust that guy to get bags out of the car. He'd probably get lost. <laughs> Goodness gracious. Cutler struggling. Well, obvious his vision is off that outfit. Uh oh, Frankie, the cross face chicken wing. Just take him home. Yeah. It's locked in, and Cutler taps out. Oh, no winner of this match, Frankie Kazarian. I don't know how I feel about what I just saw. I'm going to be honest with you. I'm a little disturbed about all of that. Well, I think Frankie needs a raise because I he think just Frankie, made me happy. Yeah, Frankie's a top tier talent that just got stuck with that mess. I mean, goodness gracious. Uh oh. Take the trash out, Frankie. Oh, cut. Frank, and there's your winner, Frankie Kazarian, throwing out the trash. We're coming back with Jamie Hayter. Set for one fall with a 20 minute time limit. Approaching the ring from Southampton, England, Jamie Hayter. This is our first time seeing Jamie Hayter back in action since her friend, her associate, Dr. Britt Baker, DMD, was defeated inside the solid steel cage by the new AEW Women's World Champion, Thunder Rosa. Thunder Rosa! And we haven't heard from Britt Baker since then. Interesting to see how the former champion reacts, but right now, our friend Jamie Hayter about to be in action. And her opponent, Rache Chanel. Viewers of AEW Dark may be familiar with Rache Chanel. Very fashionable competitor from the, uh, the fashion capital of the world, Paris, Texas. Ooh. Paris, Texas. Paris, that's Texas. Together. I dig it. Man, that's big. Look at the focus on Jamie Hayter right now. You think she's got something to prove after that Britt Baker loss, DMD you, loss? You know, with talents like hers, how could you hate her? <laughs> well, I... <laughs> Oh, shoot, I get it. That was, that was good. That was a real thinker. <laughs> Roche Chanel trying to put on the. I get it. This is a wrestling match. This isn't a fashion show, girl. Roche going to try to fix touch, Jamie's touch hair. Touch her up. Touch her up. There you uh, go. Yeah. Make her look nice. I don't think that's going to work well with a girl from Southampton. Yeah, Jamie Hayter, one of the. Strongest, toughest oh, look, competitor. Oh, yes, in yeah. W Everybody loves that. That is awesome. Also, want to just say bad job on Mike Posey on the pat down. Didn't yeah. didn't catch didn't the comb. Catch oh, the oh, oh, oh. Yeah. That's how those London girls fight. And Jamie Hayter hammering Rache Chanel. Just big elbow strikes. Those forearm shivers were in there. And that's the power of Jamie Hayter. She likes to use that big lariat. The backbreaker, oh, big swing, Rache Chanel. Up for the cover, barely a one count. Uh-oh, Rache got oh. greedy and Jamie Hayter, the backbreaker. Yeah, Rache is not chopped liver either. She comes from reality of wrestling, one of the- Oh, oh sheer the Gord Buster. Gray Buster, Jamie Jeez. Hayter. Man. How good. I'd say Jamie Hatter just sent a message right there. Yeah. I don't care how good your indie run is. It's over. Yeah, and you know what? If I'm Thunder Rosa, if I'm Jade Cargill, I am watching my back for this woman, Jamie Hayter. Wow, wow. look at that gore bust. I don't have a crystal ball, but I think there may be championship gold in Jamie Hayter's future here in AEW. How do you think Rip Baker would feel about that? That's an excellent, excellent question. Up next on AEW in singles competition, it's Sonny Kiss goes one on one against the acclaimed Max Gactor with Anthony Bowen's ringside. This body 
set for one fall with a 20 minute time limit. Introducing first from Jersey City, New Jersey, weighing 188 pounds, the Concrete Rose, Sunny Kiss. I love seeing Sunny Kiss out here compete. Talk about positive energy. Wow. Yeah, Sonny has such an incredible connection with the fans here in AEW. Incredible athlete, too. Flexible. Sonny uses that athleticism, that speed, that power so, so well. But Sonny's going to have a big test going up against one half one of the top tag teams here in AEW. And being accompanied by Anthony Bowens, Max Cascade. Yo! Yo, yo! Listen! Listen! I am. Listen! I am. Yo! Yo! Sonny Kiss, you losing to a claim tonight because you can't get on TV to save your life. Oh. Yo, you shouldn't even get a verse. You would still be a loser in the metaverse. I'm leaving with my hand raised up. You got silicone in your pancake butt. I thought you had ass. Where's that jelly? Looking like Blank from Ed, Ed, and Eddie. Wow. Wow. Oh, he even got both wow. of them. Austin Texas! about to get weird, guys. There it is, it's weird. I'm just saying. Oh, I thought you were gonna say that the butt off between Max Caster and Sonny Kiss was gonna be weird, but. <laughs> Max got a nice butt. He's athletic. Uh, I'm just gonna stay out. <laughs> you gonna stay out of it? I'm gonna stay out. Your name Bennett? Yeah, my name's Paul. You ain't in it? That's between y'all. I'm, I'm out. I'm right. out. I just wanna see some good, old-fashioned competition. <laughs> well. In a butt off. And in a butt butt off. There it is. There it is. There I knew they were going to do it. Max is oh. oh. You talking about getting your ass kicked. <laughs> Sonny. Look at the flexibility on Sonny Kiss. Sonny has nothing to prove to Max Caster. High single leg drop kick. And Caster maybe coming into this uh, underestimating Sonny Kiss, but as we've all seen before, Sonny, really tenacious, really capable competitor. Capable of huge upsets as Sonny heading to the top. Anthony Bowens trying to, does create a momentary distraction and Sonny got swept out. Wow, that's not cool. Oh, and Max Caster diving back elbow in the corner. No comment from no BS. Backdrop by Caster, lateral press. Two count, Sonny Kiss able to kick out. And want to remind everybody that AEW will be returning to the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania first on Wednesday, April 20th at the Peterson Event Center in Pittsburgh, then one week later at the Leah Kors Center in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania Fire on up. April 27th. Tickets for both events on sale right now, AEWTIX.com. Wow, you, did you, did you see hard. Sonny fire up, Paul? I do. I, yeah, that's one thing about Sonny. Matt when, Caster's a big guy, too. Matt Caster is a huge guy. And so I think Sonny got mad when Max Casper was grabbing by the ear. Yeah, uh, that's, you know? not, that, that's not respectful. Not respectful at all. Swinging neck breaker by Platinum Max. Two count on the lateral press. <laughs> Max did nothing to neutralize the legs. There you go. But now into a... Uh, it's like a uh, like kneeling Cobra clutch, yeah, maybe? Yeah, grounded Cobra clutch. Grounded Cobra clutch. See, that's why you get paid the big That's button. a kneeling one, too. Man, also, listen also, to this crowd. If we were going to compare paychecks, Paul. <laughs> <laughs> hey, K Fade, brother. K Fade, <laughs> damn it. K Fade. Sonny using that rear end as a weapon right there. Swing and a miss by Caster, but Sonny, look at that. Oh, hey, hey, no. One, One, two. Oh. Oh, that was close. Oh, Caster, though, pinpoint accuracy on that drop kick, turning Sonny inside out. Wow, just cut poor Sonny in half for that drop kick. Did you see that bump that Sonny took? Yeah. Man. Max Caster, primarily a tag team wrestler here in AEW, but a highly regarded tag team wrestler. So victory here Jeez. for Sonny, I think, would be something of an upset. I love how aggressive Max Caster's getting right now. He runs his mouth a lot, but when he turns the heat up and gets aggressive, you know, he's world champion material in my book. Well, Mark, wow. I think I think Caster may have felt the momentum shifting into Sonny's Sonny's corner. Yeah, well, you can listen to this crowd right now. You can see that Sonny is a fan favorite. 
How could Sonny not be a fan favorite? Yeah, the positivity, the athleticism. The athleticism, the showmanship, all of it. Whoa! Discus punch. Was that what that was? Or a tornado punch? Yeah, it was a tornado. And then Sonny followed it up with a bit of a drop salt. And Caster escapes out of the corner. Walks into the boot of Sonny Kiss. Sonny up to the middle rope. Coming off. Nice to has. Takes down Max Caster. Sonny building momentum. Putting things together here. <laughs> There's your butt off. Actually, Sonny did a better job on the twerk. She did. Oh, wow, I have some big corkscrew kick. Far leg hooks. Sonny with the upset. No! Oh, oh man, that, that would have so been close. fantastic. Oh, I'd have had to write a rap song. But Sonny can't afford to get frustrated. Needs to keep the pressure Come on, on keep Caster. Keep the pressure on. Gotta stay in the fight, Sonny. Gotta stay in the fight. Sonny Kiss headed up to the middle rope, maybe thinking that, that splitting leg drop. But Sonny maybe, oh, and Bowens. Bowens had the boom box taken away from him by Aubrey Edwards. Just a little bit of diss track. And it, yeah, it allowed Max Caster to capitalize, and Caster leaps over the top, maybe thinking mic drop. No. Max Caster, the mic drop. One, two, three. There's your winner, Max Caster. I mean, what Sonny low. Kiss brought the fight to Max Caster. Yes, certainly. But I mean, Mark, that's why having somebody like Anthony Bowens on the outside is so dangerous. Sonny turned their attention away from Caster for a moment, and Caster is able to capitalize. Yeah, the referee has got to do a better job of taking advantage of what their job is in the ring, and that's making sure that outside forces don't have an influence on the ending of the match. I mean, it's, to Aubrey's credit, she was trying to keep that boom box out of play, but it created the opening for Caster to take Sonny down, land the mic drop, and oh, jeez. Uh, it's getting weirder and weirder every week. That looked like some kind of utter thing. Like, it was utterly disgusting. It's utterly utterly disgusting. disgusting. Thank you. Coming up next, the former AEW Women's World Champion, Hikaru Shida, goes one on one with Miss Reality, Maddie Renkowski. Definitely one of my favorites here in AEW. It's so good to see her back. Absolutely good to see her back. She she loves my impressions. Oh, no. Oh, yeah. I, I let her hear my Longhorn impression. You want to hear it? No. And her opponent, Maddie Renkowski. Hey, Martha, on a serious note, though. You know, the other day, I thought that I was having all those problems with my dryer shrinking my clothes. You'll come to find out it was a refrigerator the whole damn time. <laughs> Jeez. The car of Sheeta going on on one of Maddie, Maddie <laughs> Renkowski. is not in a drawer. Sheeta just returned, actually, from uh, competing over in Tokyo Joshi Pro, their big Rio Goku Sumo ah. Hall event. Sheeta was victorious, and that was actually part of the, uh, the celebration for DDT, oh. where they talked about the... The upcoming relationship between DDT, Tokyo Joshi Pro, and AEW, and but wow. Sheeta, just a big knee strike catching Renkowski in the face. It's one of the things I love about Sheeta is she uses the ring to her advantage. Whoa! Right inside out, suplex in. And the far leg hook, Matty Renkowski, though, able to kick out. We've seen Renkowski compete here in AEW before. She was actually a part of the AEW Women's World Championship Eliminator Tournament last year. And she's a very capable competitor, but Hikaru Shida is a former AEW Women's World Champion. Yes, she is. And, yeah. and, a, and a fighting champion. Yeah, she It's not like she dodged anybody. She fought the best of the best. Yeah, she did the longest reigning world champion of any division here in AEW history. That is no small feat, but now Maddie Renkowski, oh, went for the leg drop to the back of the head, but Shida the axe kick. It's so efficient in how Hikaru Shida moves. Everything has a purpose. The axe kick, the falcon arrow. Shida's done the deal and scores the win. The winner of this match, Hikaru Shida. Holy Shida. <laughs> that was good. And Hikaru Shida.
victorious here in her return to action on AEW Dark Elevation. But you know Sheeta has the rivalry with Serena Deeb on her mind. Don't go anywhere, Ruby Soho and Anna J face the Renegade Twins. Jones over here. <laughs> right. But Ruby Soho, since her arrival here in AEW, has been such an important presence in the women's locker room. She's she's an experienced veteran, and for competitors like Anna Jay, such a great mentor. And their opponents, Charlotte and Robin Renegade. Charlotte and Robin Renegade set to face off against Anna Jay and Ruby Soho. Well, as great as Anna and Ruby are, they're not twins and they're not a tag team. These women have the advantage, I think. Well, I think uh, Ruby Soho, though, with her, her so, so well-traveled years of experience competing around the world, I think will help make up for that uh, whatever, whatever twin bond the Renegade sisters may have. And we just saw a size advantage right there, too. I believe that's Charlotte inside the ring with Ruby Soho. Ruby grabs the waist lock. And, oh, there we see Ruby. She's caught, caught Charlotte. She stuck her head out, and Charlotte got greedy, and Ruby took that side headlock takeover. Ruby slowing the pace down, allowing her opponent to make the mistakes, and Ruby looking to capitalize. This is being experienced better and control the tempo in the ring whenever you Oh! That was a shot right on the chin. Here comes Anna Jay. And Anna got the blind tag, comes in, that flipping neck breaker. High velocity by Anna Jay. Anna slams Charlotte face first. Oh! To that turnbuckle pad and it comes in with that leg kick. One, Look two. Leg. Oh, there's that twin magic. Come in and make the tag, make the save. I love how when they do something dirty and get caught, they put their hands up like they're innocent. I didn't do anything. What me? Contre mon frère, just not I. Robin grabbing, grabbing the that trunks weird? and Charlotte. Right now, Anna Jay in trouble, deep in enemy territory. Why is it that every time something goes wrong, there's a French accent that she uses? Well, <laughs> again, all the French again, that you're Anna, not going to get me in trouble, Mark. Anna no. kicked, kicked her feet. She blocked the double suplex. And made the tag while she was on top. Yeah, that's a heads up move. And that's pretty good tag team teamwork. Yeah, double flatliners. And, and Ruby, that rising knee strike thrust kick catches Robin. Then Zigiri. That one may have grazed Robin, but it's still enough to stun her. And Ruby Soho, no, no future. No future. And Anna into the Queen Slayer. Robin Renegade with nowhere left to go. No choice but to tap out. Are your winners, the team of Ruby Soho and Anna Jay. Wow, I stand corrected, man. Talent, regardless of whether they're a team or not, rises to the top. Yeah, Ruby Soho and Anna Jay working together so effectively here tonight. No future. Caught Robin on the side of the head right into that Queen Slayer ball. That's pretty good teamwork. Without being Captain Obvious over here. Yeah, yeah, you work, man, Captain Obvious, right there. A little bit. Ruby Soho and Anna J victorious tonight. Up next on AEW Tag Team Competition, the Factories QT Marshall and Aaron Solo take on the Rapungi Vice, Trent Beretta and Rocky Romero. This is a tag team bout set for one fall with a 20 minute time limit. Introducing first to be accompanied by Nick Camarado at a combined weight of 430 pounds, the team of Aaron Solo and QT Marshall. 
Big Look. time tag team main event here on AEW Dark Elevation and a match with a lot of political intrigue behind it. QT Marshall, Nick Camarado, and Aaron Solo, the factory, recently showed up at New Japan Strong, part of New Japan Pro Wrestling's efforts here in the United States. And the factory really saying that they could add something that New Japan Pro Wrestling was lacking. And New Japan Pro Wrestling sent their response in the form of this tag team main event here tonight on Elevation. And their opponents at a combined weight of 377 pounds. Rocky Romero, Trent Barreto, Rapongi, Rocky Romero and Trent Barreto. I see nothing but gold ahead of those two guys. They are one of the most highly decorated junior heavyweight tag teams in New Japan Pro Wrestling history. And Rocky Romero here to respond to QT Marshall for all the things that he said on New Japan Strong. You can imagine that, QT Marshall running his mouth, really? <laughs> exactly. Yeah, it just doesn't seem to fit. And if there's anybody that could shut him up, it is Rocky Romero. What a talented guy, man. And he also loved the sound of Longhorns. Oh, my God. Oh, Nick oh. Camarado. Nick Camarado does it. Man, did he just knock off Rocky Romero's eye patch? Yeah, he ran over both members of Rapongi Vice. And now Aaron Solo and QT Marshall with Trent Barreto and Rocky Romero on the outside. The bell has rung. But the factory with a distinct advantage here in the early goings. Look at QT just walking around like he's the cat that stole the canary. Well, he is running around a double medium shirt, so there you go. A double medium. Aaron Solo looking to make a quick end of it there. Just a one count, though. Disrespectful cross-face cover, that forearm across the face. Yeah, and Rocky Romero, such a, a well-traveled veteran, somebody that I, I battled many times very early on in our, our collective careers. And since then, he has only grown as a competitor. You wrestle? I'm just kidding. I know your story history, Excalibur. Don't get your panties in a bunch. I was just playing. Thanks, Mark. I appreciate that. You know you're over with me, brother. Double brother. <laughs> I got him. Give me a spinal adjustment. Got that him. slap on the back. Oh, oh I'm sorry. I, I don't know my own strength sometimes. I mean, you are the world's strongest man. Ouch. Rocky Romero doing everybody a favor and slapping QT Marshall right in the mouth. <laughs> Thank you. Appreciate it. But QT, though, with the quick tag out to Aaron Solo. Oh, Kick man. to the ribs. Say what you want about QT. He is pretty smart in some aspects. He knows How when to take so? A cheap, he knows when to take a cheap shot and make it count. Solo and then with tag that out. That ridge hand chop right in the throat. Yes, and tag out. He said he was smart. Yeah. But Rocky Romero. Trying to fight his way back to his corner. Yeah, but Solo just cuts him off one swift shot to the gut. Well, that needed a bread basket. Sure, makes it hard to get a breath. Man, there's nothing more painful than to get caught in the ribs in the abdominal area. Rocky Romero just leaps up, catches Solo on the hook on Rana. QT Here Marshall he comes. makes the tag. Mr. Pick the Bones. That's what I call him, Mr. Pick Your Bones. Well, he's a scavenger. I agree. The catfish. Rocker Romero. Oh! Oh, that's an uppercut. <laughs> crack QT on the jaw. Rocky comes over the top, the running slice spread. I'm surprised the ring didn't get covered in Chia Pet fur. <laughs> and Rocky makes the tag. Trent Barretta legal for his team. Aaron Solo legal for the factory. Oh, half and half. QT got planted high on the shoulders there by Trent Barretta. You know, half and half makes a hole. And look at that, just deadlift German suplex by Trent Barretta. <laughs> Orange arm. Cassidy showing his support. His one arm. Big back elbow in the corner by Barretta. Barretta launches off the DDT. He's never looked better, guys. 
Oh, Trent looks amazing. Jeez. Absolutely. I hope Fuego Del Sol was watching that DDT, too. Yeah, if I looked like that, I wouldn't own any clothes. <laughs> Aaron Solo. Oh, my God. Set up on that top rope. Drop kick by Romero. Running knee strike by Beretta. Two. No. Solo able to kick out. Man, look at the resilience right there by Solo. Yeah, but what a response by New Japan Pro Wrestling and Rocky Romero. You, you come into our house uninvited, QT Marshall, this is what you're going to get. You're going to get one of the best tag teams that New Japan Pro Wrestling has ever seen. But, oh, big right hand. Caught Rocky Romero on the jaw. Trent Beretta, blindside, sends QT to the outside. Oh, no, no, he's not going to do that. I know what he's going to do, guys. He's getting ready to take flight. Trent Barrett. Oh, oh air to that. This no good. Sorry, Sasquatch looking son of a gun. Nick Camarado getting right in the face of the corkscrew kick from Aaron Solo. Barrett only saw it at the last possible moment. Didn't even have a chance to get his hand up to block it. And now Aaron Solo charges in. Trent Barretta showing his toughness, got the elbow up. Oh wait, QT Marshall pops him up. Big right elbow strike. And Solo, QT combination offense here. Solo, near leg hook, but Rocky Romero there to break things up. Rocky should be really going to the referee going, hey, can you do something about that? Just let QT come in without making a tag. Ooh, whoa, <laughs> there you go. Rocky Romero throwing in some big right hands. Oh, Rapongi Vice, though, double knee strike. And Paul, that's the tag team chemistry of Rocky and Trent Beretta. Those are hours and hours of working together, teamwork. Even though QT Marcel and Factor are great at pack tactics, Trent Beretta and Rocky Romero are great at tag team work together. And Rapongi Vice looking for a strong. Zero, one, two, three. Yeah. Are your winners, Rapungi. So good. So good. Rocky, just for making that save, you get to hear the Longhorn. Mm. Oh, Rocky Romero, Trent Moretta, victorious here tonight in our main event. Hope to see you tomorrow night for AEW Dark on YouTube and on Wednesday, Dynamite Live on TBS. And make sure you remember that wonderful Longhorn sound from Mark Henry.